In Creo Parametric, there is a special kind of table in drawing mode called a whole table that you can use to document your holes. Now, I have not used these since about Wildfire 2. It's been a good 15 plus years since I've used them. Later on, I'll explain why, but let me show you how to use them. Let's say I have this part and I want to create a table for the holes on this surface. The first thing I need is a coordinate system in which the Z axis is going to be parallel to the axis of the holes. Here is the default coordinate system. Let's create a new coordinate system, and I'll reference this one. I'm fine with this being the origin of the new coordinate system. I won't translate it or relocate it. If I go to the orientation tab, I can choose to change the direction of this hole. And again, right now I need Z to point in the upward direction. Let's try rotating 90 degrees about the X axis. And let's see, I can see that my new coordinate system, Z is pointing up, but I want the X axis to be pointing to the right maybe for how I want the dimensions to appear in the table. Let's try rotating about the Z axis also, 90 degrees. And so X, Z, I think this is right. Let's go to the properties tab. I'll rename this and call it holes. Click the OK button. And just so I can see everything, let me hide this coordinate system. And, oh, nope, looks like I got it wrong. No problem. Let's edit definition. And let's see how do I want to do this. Let me go to the orientation tab again. And let's see, to get the Z axis pointing up, let's rotate about Y, 90 and change the Z to zero. And let's see if I click the OK button again. Sometimes it's just a little real confusing when they have the two coordinate systems overlap, but that looks right to me. Z pointing up, X to the right, Y in that direction. Hey, that is great. Let's create our drawing now. I will choose File, New, and then change the type to drawing. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to change the file name. I am just going to create an empty drawing for this particular part. C size is fine. And then let's throw on a general view to reference. I will not use a combined state. And I already set up a predefined view to use for the orientation of the drawing. Let's see, let's go to the scale. The scale is a little small. Let's use a custom scale of two and hit the apply button. That's good, let's click okay. Reposition the part so that appears on the sheet. And I'm gonna turn off my coordinate system display. I do not need it. All right, so I wanna document the holes on this surface. To do that, we go to the table tab. Here is the whole table command. I'll click on, and this is the dialog box. And so you can choose whether the table is going to document holes or datum points or datum axes. You can choose whether it's going to be standard holes using the hole feature, sketched holes, and I'm gonna check this box to include cuts as well because we all know that a lot of people use the extrude tool to create holes when they really should use the hole tool, but they don't. But we wanna capture those anyway. And right now, the table is going to have four columns. One thing that's a little confusing about this list is that we have these rows, and each one of these rows corresponds to a column in our new table. So the first column will be the whole label parameter, and the name of the column will be whole, no, and you can double click, and if you just want it to be listed as whole instead of whole number you can enter in that value and you can also customize the width and then we are going to have the second column be the x coordinate the third column be the y coordinate and the fourth column is the diameter and here we have some buttons if you want to add in maybe some other different parameters that belong to the features or the feature name there are a few other ones that you can put in there and then you can reorder the columns all right, so for the column sort, it's using the default. Maximum number of rows, 8,001. Wow, that's a lot of holes for a part. You have two different choices for the naming convention, alphanumeric or numeric. 
When I do use this, I prefer alphanumeric because it'll sort of group the holes together by similar diameters and types. And the position for the whole label by default is to the upper right of the hole, but you could have it placed on the center of the hole. And one of the weird things is that once you create this table, you can't really edit definition. If you want to make changes to the table, you click on the whole table command, and then you can click on the settings and then edit the definition of an existing table. So now that everything has been filled out, let me click the create button. And right now it's prompting me to select a coordinate system. That's why I created this coordinate system. And now it's prompting me to locate the top left corner of the table. So I clicked on the sheet. And now you can see the result of the whole table. And here you see the first column, A1 through A9. And so those are for the bigger holes. And then you can see that we have a bunch of holes with the label B. And then we have the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the diameter uh, of the individual instances. And you can see that goes all the way from B1 to B32. And you can see the numbering on there. So that's the basics of creating a whole table. Let me go to another part to show you this. Here I have a part and there are a bunch of different holes in here, but they're created in different manners. So for example, I have a regular straight hole with a constant diameter, and then I used a fill pattern to put it in a region. Then we have, let's see, another hole over here, and this is a standard hole. If I turn on my note display, you can see that we have the notes that were created for the standard hole, and then I mirrored the hole a couple of times. Let me turn my notes back off. And then I've got another one where I just took a sketch. Let me edit definition and then go to my sketch view. And you'll notice that this particular sketch, oh, let me turn off my constraint display. With this particular hole, I just sketched the geometry so that we have multiple closed loops and we have a circle here in the middle. And so when this was extruded, well, we have something that looks like a hole. So now let me start off by once again creating a coordinate system to reference. Let me click on coordinate system. And for the references, I'll locate it at the intersection of the lower left hand corner. That's good for the origin. And so for this particular surface, I want this to drive my Z direction. Ah, I like it pointing up. It doesn't have to, but just my preference. And then for the second reference for the orientation, this surface, let's have this surface determine X and let's flip it. Actually, no, I want this to be Y. Let's do Y. There we go. Now I have the coordinate system oriented the way that I want. Let me go to the properties tab and again, just rename it so that I know what I am using this particular coordinate system for. All right, that's good. Let's click the OK button to complete the feature. Now let's create a drawing once again. File, new, drawing, and I'm not going to bother changing the name. I'm just going to create an empty drawing. C size is good. And now let's create our general view. And I'm not going to use a combined state from the model. Let's locate the view about over here and let me see let me try a top view from the model let me repaint the screen there we go that looks good let me click the OK button let me reposition it a little bit more on the sheet so I've got this particular view in here and you know what let me make the scale bigger just so that the labels won't be all over the place let's use a custom scale of two hit the OK button ah, yeah, it's a little big but now to create the whole table, once again, I will go to the table tab, click on the whole table command, 
And to show you one of the other different options, let me use datum axes instead uh, and show you one of the downsides of that. When I choose datum axes, you'll notice that the different choices for the types of holes go away. Also, we only have three columns. We'll have the feature name, the uh, which will be under the column called axis name and then we'll have the X and Y and we will not have a diameter for the hole. So that's one thing to be aware if you're going to create a whole table just using axes. All the other different controls are the same. Let's click the create button. Once again, it's prompting me for a reference coordinate system. And I'll just pick that out of the model tree and then locate the upper left hand corner. So in this particular case, here we have the different axis names. You can see that A1, then unfortunately we get the A10s, A20s. You can change the sort of this, but if you actually want to see the axes in the screen, you'll have to go to the Annotate tab, Show Model Annotations, then go to the last tab for your datums. I'm going to change the drop down list to Axes, and then pick the drawing view. Let's select all and then click OK. And so there are all the different axes. Let me go to the View tab and make sure that my, where are my axis labels? Let me repaint. And so there you see that we have, again, corresponding to the axes. These are the actual axis names from the model. A couple things that you'll notice. A27, A28 over here, A25, A26. These are the axes going through the fillets on the outside of the tab. There's no actual hole there. So be aware that when you use the axis option, you're going to get all the axes that are normal to the surface, whether or not they are associated with a hole. Let me go to the table tab, grab the table and delete it. Yes, I want to delete it. Let me turn off my axis display and let me go to the annotate tab and go to the datums. I don't want to see all these axes in here, so I'm just going to select all of them using the shift key and then use the erase button, repaint the screen. All right, so the whole table, once again, I'll go to the table tab, click on whole table, and again, we'll use holes. I'll check for all the different options for how it should find holes. I'll leave everything else the same. Let's click Create, select the coordinate system, locate the upper left-hand corner. You'll notice we have a much shorter list this time. And of course, we got the pattern from the top surface. Those were created with the whole feature. Those are labeled A1 through A15. And then we have four other rows for the holes that were created using the standard hole tool. And one nice thing about the standard holes is that the diameter shows up with the actual type of hole, size of hole that was used to create it from the hole dashboard. So that's why you see 10-24 UNC for these particular holes over here. But you'll notice that these other holes were not picked up. That's one of the issues that I have with the hole table. I've had situations where I've gone back and I've double checked and said, hey, wait, some of the holes weren't actually picked up by the whole table tool. Another problem I had, again, this was a long time ago. We're talking probably like 2004, 2005. And this is why I haven't really used this tool at all since. Sometimes I've done an edit definition where I change a pattern, change the holes, add holes, delete holes, and then I'll go back to the whole table and I didn't see it update. And this is something that a few of us have brought to the current PTC product manager for 2D detailing. Hopefully in the future we will see a new tool. I'm just a person who was like burned a long, long time ago. That's why I don't use it. Hey, your mileage may vary, so maybe you will find some use out of this particular whole table functionality. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.